here with Simon Muta, Chief Executive of Telecom, has been here for 10 months now, yeah. and we're at Telecom Place in central, central Auckland. Um, and we're going to do an interview in four parts, which is going to cover a fairly broad range of aspects of, of the telecom business. And we're going to start off talking about the importance of communications and technology in an innovation sense for New Zealand. And I thought a really nice place to start with that might be to talk about your own personal use of technology and what sort of phone do you have? Look, I, I've got the, the new HTC One yeah. uh, phone, so I've, I've you know, had a go at shifting from Apple to the, sort of the Android world, yeah. and, uh, and look, I'm a very, um, I'm a very active, I'm a, on the move all the time, so I find the mobile device the most important, I like the larger screen, I'm, I'm on, the, on, the, on the work email all the time, I'm on, uh, I, I you know, use it heavily for consuming news and Bloomberg and uh, the Herald Online is probably my most used app. I use TVNZ on demand on the on the mobile sort of stuff. So that you know, I'm a pretty active user in our household at home. I've got young kids and teenagers. And, uh, you know, we're 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 full on broadband consumers, and you know, uh, yeah, we're pretty. So, so in terms of your phone, I mean, you're not really just using it as a phone. I mean, you, you do calls on it as well, but a tiny part of what absolutely I uh, like like most modern smartphone users mm. I'd, I'd be very typical with a business orientation I'm not a I'm not interested in gaming or things like that, you know so I you know but I'm on it yeah uh, a fair bit of the day the one thing I'm good at is at night time I, I I can put it down. down and leave it alone so I'm not wedded to it through the through entirely through the dark hours but on the day I would be I would be, you know, up there with a typical New Zealander who's looking at their phone 150 times a day for something. Yeah, that, yeah. that yeah. statistic was one of the things that I mm. saw in your latest data, yeah. yeah. that big data presentation. It's um, that comes from survey data. I think it's come out of some research that our uh, that our comms team have located somewhere. So which is a nice line. Yeah. Which is remarkable in terms yeah. of um, how intimate the devices are. And I think there's a bit of a survey out today which was saying. Something along the lines of people felt that their phones were the, mo the most um, sort of intimate possession these yeah, days. Yeah, I, I look, it's it's very technology is incredibly pervasive, and, and I don't think any of us could imagine what life would be like without being constantly connected to our friends and our family, or to news or information, or the or the social networks we're involved in anymore. And it's it, you know that is just what society's like today. So you know I think we are connected to these devices and you know, it's very much, you know, the culture and the societies have acted quite quickly to, to reflect that. What what other what other services do you use personally? You mean you have broadband at home, you have fiber or VDSL? I, I've got a VDSL connection to home and uh, um, and we you know we're quite heavy uh, broadband consumers but in a not in a not in a heavy sort of gaming scenes or things like that, but my family, we, we, we consume a bit of video, we, you know, we've got, we use Apple TV and things like that yeah. to uh, to watch the odd movie. Uh, my children, are, uh, young children are on the iPads all the time doing the little games and things that, that, that they do on that. So we, we'd be, a no I think, reflective of a normal, mm. uh, technologically capable, typical family household in New Zealand today. And that means that all the family members are on, have their own wireless devices? They do, they that. do. My, even my three-year-old is, uh, is an active iPad <laughs> user <laughs> and, he's, and he's got the iPad 1, you know, cast off, so, uh, you know, they, yeah. he, he plays his little things on there. He watches YouTube and all those things. I mean, it's easy to forget that the iPad's pretty new, actually, and um, that the iPhone itself has only been around for seven years now, yeah. seven or eight years, in 2006. How, how big a deal do you think the the iPhone, the smartphone in particular, is as a technological development in terms of society? Well, I think it, 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 it's been a groundbreak, because I think, I think when I reflect on what Apple did actually, Apple mostly recognised that the vast majority of users of technology made relatively simple use of them. I mostly consumed, looked at things and typed the odd email. So, so they made, uh, they brought the world to us in a way where you're mostly using these devices to communicate and consume material. You're not, 
applying sophisticated intelligence software or doing incredibly bad things. So they made it incredibly accessible. And I don't think we ever will ever not be that now. So that was for me the radical shift. And and you know, still practically every day I I was at some good thing, God, did I actually do what I just did, you know, having come from a world where finding a piece of information took, you know, that was a bit tricky to find would take you two or three days searching through books and libraries or mm. combing through old newspapers to be able to go onto wiki or or you know just bang into the uh, into the search window some words and would instantly have the practically answer. have the I, I find it unbelievable and I you know to to be in a car in another country in the desert to be able to look at the Herald online yeah. well, it just amazes me every single day now you know it doesn't amaze my children because it's yeah. that is what they've grown what up they've grown with, with but uh, um, but I think it is incredible. So I mean, fifty percent of New Zealanders already have, have internet enabled phones now. Um, that changes telecommunications too at a, at a fundamental level. And um, in your in your in your presentation, which I which I was looking, at, there was a bunch of facts which I think are worth just reciting here because yeah. they're just so amazing. So global IP traffic will increase threefold in five years. Traffic from wireless devices will exceed traffic from wired devices by next year. So all of the commercial big data movement stuff is going to be smaller than the, the mobile traffic yeah, traffic yeah. that's been that's, that's moving. The number of mobile devices on cellular networks has increased from one billion to over seven billion in the world. Um, how many people are there? That's nearly that's nearly every person on the planet. Yeah. yeah. Um, broadband households have gone from two million, to 10 million to 2 billion during the same period. Smartphone data usage will increase eightfold by 2017. Average smartphone we users reaches for their phone 150 times a day. As we said. The, New Zealand, the average New Zealand house now consumes as much data in a month as the whole of New Zealand consumes in a day, 15 years ago. 90% of the world's data has been created in just the past two years, and that trend is accelerating. I mean, and I can I can figure that out when I've got my camera, which is just eating up the data. Yeah. I've got a nice, nice new laptop, but it doesn't seem to keep up with the camera anymore. And I mean, and then there's another thing here, which I think is which is the flip side of all this: broadband pricing, pricing competing in New Zealand has become a profit-free zone. And I mean, that's, these are very challenging and. Times, yeah. Well, they're crazy statistics, aren't they? Yeah. they they're mind-boggling, and they're reflective of of a once in a multi-generational change. And and I think what they reflect to me is we're moving away from uh, a world based on connectivity, which is sort of minutes based, if you like, to a world which is connectivity is all about gigabytes. And I think that in, in, for, for the new telecom. We're in the gigabytes business, not in the minutes business. Mm. And we think about enhancing that, you know, 24 7, anywhere, anytime, any place uh, connectivity, but it's about gigabytes less so about a voice minute or a circuit switch this or, a, you know, that, that technology. So it's, it's providing that ubiquitous access to, uh, to the all data world, the Internet of Things, all this. Mm. And, and you know, my, in my you know few years away from the business, the internet itself moved from being a network over here, which was used for email and a bit of trivial sort of inter, you know YouTube and mostly trivia, to the network. The internet is becoming the global communication connectivity network. It, it didn't five years ago it was not that; it was an alternate. Mm. Uh, to what you would have regarded as the real networks, it is becoming the network, mm. and so that that changes everything uh, about the way we operate. So we we are making our business centric to the all data network, and and we don't really view cellular or Wi-Fi or fiber or bitstream copper as anything other than alternate means to assist a customer in being connected mm. anywhere, anytime. That's, they're, just, they're just access mechanisms. There's only one network, mm. 
and you keep all of your stuff and all of your connections are in there. You do all your business. Yeah, and we're just helping you be there wherever you are. Thinking more broadly about innovation, disruption and change, at the centre of this increasing velocity of change is telecommunications and this ubiquitous connectivity that you talk about. How, I mean, that's changed telecom. How much, I mean, how much different and how fast is that change taking place? Well, you know, you, I think you don't have to sort of look too far from a, a newspaper in the last few months yeah. to realise tele there's, a, there's a profound transformation occurring yeah. in telecom. Uh, yeah, partly due to structural change in, in the way we configure the New Zealand, partly just reflecting this rapid shift in, in our society operates in this, you know, in this permanently connected world of, of big data, of social media, of mobility, yeah. um, and, uh, and, and so we, you know, we're adjusting our business very quickly to be, um, to, be, to be able to move at the same pace, and one of the lines we use in our, in our internal strategy is this concept of operating at the speed of life, which is, is a reflection of actually the markets are really there, most people are real-time connected, they're doing stuff all of the time on the go, the boundaries between work and play have already blurred, it's, it's all on. So telecom needs to operate in the same, at the same pace, so you know, in, in business jargon we'd call that agility and things, but really it's pace, it's just a business that has to keep up, um, and that's a challenge, not just for our industry, you know, as the network provider, but there are many other businesses profoundly affected by these changing trends in the media industry and newspapers mm. and news and kind of things. And so that they're also it's a you know globally there are lots and lots of industries you know coming to grips with what this new world looks like. Well, in the wider um, innovation ecosystem, telecoms are the leading player in New Zealand, and it plays an important role. Um, is it your is it your role to assist the community to make these tra the transformation that it's that it's got ahead of it? It's, we, I, we we see that as an you know an absolute anchor sort of tenant of this company. We have we have a, a sense of a deep sense of obligation. It's one of the largest corporations in New Zealand. This is still a very infrastructure intensive industry. So, you know, all this cool stuff is happening because some companies are investing more than a billion dollars a year between them and we're you know, we're the biggest of those companies. So New Zealand can't have this if it doesn't have companies willing to make the bets, mm. uh, do the big investments, employ the skilled people people, bring the right suppliers to and, and so for me, one of the roles of the telecom group is to be a New Zealand-centric provider of that. We've got other players in the country, global players, they will bring a global perspective, but we have, we're a single market company, we are here for New Zealand, and we have a strong sense of that obligation to do that job really well. And, and, and when we execute that job really well, New Zealand is better for it. You know, we, we're helping keep New Zealand's economy uh, up with the rest of the world. We're, we're keeping, you know, we're, we're bringing New Zealanders the best technology services the world has to offer. That's, you know, that's something we take seriously, and we, you know, we have a strong sense of pride in, in, in what we do. How can telecom benefit from building that capacity? Well, clearly, we, you know, we're in a business which, mm. which. Uh, ultimately, will profit if New Zealanders are doing well from, from the service. So, you know, if we're delivering Kiwi businesses uh, and New Zealanders the services they need, and they feel like they're globally competitive and connected and successful, and New Zealand's a successful nation, we're 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 successful too. We're successful so too. It's about That's part of the journey. It's yeah. about building complexity. Um, and competitiveness into the And it's a slightly odd industry at the moment because you know we we we're overall with demand for what we do, but we do find it difficult to turn it into financial returns right now. And I think that is that's an element of the moment in time where technological change is stressing the old business models and you know we we've still got a business which earns revenue from 
cool minutes, but cool minutes are becoming software, not circuits, and so, you know, moving through that change. So ultimately, it's still a very healthy business that we're confident uh, we can turn the financial performance uh, around as well. But we do need to, and if, if we don't have a strong telecom, and uh, then, you know, we don't earn enough money to invest in the sort of, you know, capability that needs to enable all this, then we'll be the poorer for it in the long term. Our company will be poorer, and so will the nation. So, we'll come from. Um, so all of this change is, is obviously full of opportunity and challenge and, and excitement. But at the other, on the other flip side of it, it's kind of bewildering for a lot of people involved. And, and there's a cost to that in terms of stress on, on people and stress on businesses. Um, so I mean, aspects of the information revolution uh, are painful. How, how does Telecom feel about that? I mean, do you, do you feel a, a responsibility to help people navigate that at a, at a personal level as well? Look, we, that's an issue we're starting to, to, to think more about and, and the, probably the first real move there is the Tech in the Sec program. Tech in the Sec program we've been running on, uh, on TV and is very heavy on our websites, which are just is a, as an attempt to provide some support to the less technically savvy to make the most of these new devices in the connected world in a low stress manner and how to control them and maximise the benefit. But I think, you know, certainly the internet, the access to unbelievable amounts of information, the lack of controls around it, the security risks, the, per the intervention in privacy, the, the risks to privacy, the cyber security issues that we've, you know, we've had some experience with recently ourselves with the Yahoo attacks, you know, mm. all of these things have us deeply thinking actually about, well, what, what is the role telecom might be able to play in assisting our business customers to operate their businesses without risk, to, op to enable families to use all of this technology without having objection or content mm. in front of their young children or, you know, though we, we haven't got the answers for that yet, but we certainly do think a lot about the role we can play. So, I mean, I've seen um, this technological revolution take place over the past, well, my entire life, really, but the pace of change is now faster than ever. Do you have any idea, I mean, I don't actually have any idea, I mean, I have some vague guesses about where we might go in the next five to ten years, but I mean, do you have a vision of of what happens and where we are in five to ten years' time. Okay, you know, I find it uh, extremely difficult. I, I guess for me, um, the I, I think connectivity, this sort of connected world, is we just know. Uh, if you think today, there's seven million devices. Uh, the number mm. of the to use before seven million cellular devices. I suspect there'll be fifty billion. Uh, so we'll have multiple connected devices because you know the, the fridge your fridge will be connected, your car will be connected, you you'll have a health wristband on that's feeding you back information. So we we this technology is you know this sort of connected, this global connected thing is you know I, I don't think we've scratched the surface of how it might impact us, or the good it can do, or the efficiency benefits, or the health benefits, or the education benefits, but uh, but exactly how that materialises, and how it's controlled, and you know how it's put to good use and not and not sinister use and things. It's very very hard to, to pick uh, all of those things. And you know all all I do is in our company we'll do our very best to keep pace to lead it where we can lead it and to respond where we miscue because you know this is a business where you take bets and a lot of them it's a hard it's a hard industry to make to, to, to have every bet you make be the right bet so we play options often we'll, we'll take positions and we'll get plenty of them wrong and we hope then you know that we adapt quickly to follow the, the trends as they emerge but boy you know it's a very hard industry to to, uh, to be too predictive about, isn't it? Mm. Oh, thank you, Simon. That's the first part. Oh, when we get back, we'll talk about transformation. Great.